this life gone, live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm bad What's up, everybody? Before we get into anything, you guys know we've had a couple audio issues. So I need to know in the chat, we got 16 people in here already. Let me know how I sound. Do I sound good? Hello? Do I sound hello? Check, check, check. One, two, three. Please let me know so I don't talk for four minutes. And I sound like I am a robot at work talking like this, watching TV. Audio still kind of sucks. Okay. Well, thanks for that, Jade. I appreciate it. Let's see. Okay, see, that's why I need you to tell me. Let's see if that works. Check, check, check. One, two. I hate life. There we go. I think that sounds better. Yep, there we go. So let's get started and then let me know if it does and let me make sure that it sounds good when we get the guys in here. So today, guys, you guys know we are 21 hours away to the MLB starting. Obviously, we had the game, the Padres and the Dodgers. And everything else like that but tomorrow all the games start all the teams are playing official baseball it's opening day 2024 in the mlb season as you can see behind me the white Sox. they're facing these detroit tigers as we got garrett crochet taking on scooble still don't know how to say his first name Ter Tariq, Tariq, however you want to say it. i don't know but tigers white Sox. it's the mlb season guys so we got a lot to talk about and a lot to get to so let's not waste any more time and let's get Deech in here before we introduce our guest. Deech, how you doing today? What's up, bro? I'm, I'm, I'm no, man. man. Opening day is tomorrow, tomorrow, so uh, that's, really, that's really, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, let's get this shirt. Let's get, let's get, let's get, get it going. Tomorrow, so, uh, oh, your echo. Oh, oh, now I got to fix it because we got, now I, I know what I have to do. Can you talk now? Let me know how does it sound now, guys. Is it good? No, I think I think I know what I have to do now. Can you talk now? Let me know how does it sound now, guys. There we go. Check, check, check. One, two. Yeah, there we go. No, I think I think I know what I have to do. Okay. There we go. I have to have a different setting when I am on by myself and when I am on with somebody. So okay. that's what I think that's what it is. I'm not muted. I can hear myself. There we go. Okay. I'm not muted now. There we go. So, guys, Deech, now how you doing, bro? Sorry, I just wanted to make sure now we know what the issue is. So, go ahead. Uh, just excited for the home opener tomorrow. Um, it's like it's like Christmas Eve if you're a little child you're sitting there waiting to open your presents. I mean, tomorrow hopefully we open a win. Um, it should be fun to watch Garrett Crochet pump 100 miles per hour on the mound. And, I mean, overall, it's a great matchup. Scooble is a very good pitcher. So, I'm just excited to watch some baseball in person. It's been a while, so. Hey, you know what? Hey, we'll, we'll both be there, so we'll make sure to we'll, – we'll, we'll let everybody know on Twitter when we're together. But we're both going to the game, and bef we'll uh, we'll introduce our guest here in a second. But I want to ask you, and I'm going to ask him the same question. Do you have any opening day tradition? You said Christmas Eve. You got any traditions you do today like me? I don't know. I like to watch – like go watch like Fever Pitch or like Feel the Dreams or I don't know. I like watching baseball movies. So what, what do you got? Um – I, I mean, the last two seasons I would watch game three just because that brought some joy. But at this point, that's kind of uh, off to the wayside. The same team's not here. So I, I, I'll probably watch some spring training highlights, just read up on some stuff. But overall, nothing too crazy this evening. So now that we fixed the audio, and now we sound okay. And now we don't sound like robots, and we've had a few questions. Let's introduce our guest here, because it is a first-time guest, not only to the Southside boys, but to Tino's time also. Speaking of that, guys, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. But first-time guest here on the show. You, you, you told me it's a long time coming. He told me you guys have been talking about this. You guys have been setting this up without me, bro. What the heck? But happy to have him on. And apparently, Deech... This is the first time he's ever showing his face, so we should feel a little special. The man is kind of giving us a little something that, you know, he doesn't show everybody. So, 
let's not waste any more time, guys, and let's get our first time guest in here. Welcome, Footlong Comiskey, to Tino's Time. How we doing, bro? We're doing good, man. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me on, and uh, I'm excited to talk some ball and get ready for the season. Yeah, I appreciate it, and thank you for understanding the technical issues. That's exactly why I said I wouldn't know until we started, but I figured it out, I think. So I appreciate you coming on, making some time. As I was just asking, Deech, do you have any like opening day traditions? Do you want to let the people know a little bit about you, how you've become a White Sox fan, stuff like that? Just, you know. Yeah, so, uh, you know, don't really have anything going on opening day. I was trying to go to the game, but and things got complicated. Um, I've been, I haven't been to an opening day at the rate, but I've been one time at uh Kauffman stadium. I was five, it was a five years ago, six years ago, long time ago when uh, Matt Davidson had a three home run day oh. <laughs> and won like 15 to five. I was at that game. Uh, yeah. I mean, went down to Kansas City for that one. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I've been a White Sox fan my whole life. Um, it's really just kind of been, um a family thing too like you know i my my grandpa was a huge white Sox fan and he kind of got me into it and then uh and then just growing up and as i got older like it just became like such a love for my for me myself and uh and yeah i mean it's really just kind of been a part of my life and i you know and i watch as many games as i can i'm obviously present on twitter as most of you know and uh yeah it's it's a super uh super great community and i you know i love being a fan so are we in the right community? Are we in the same community? Because I don't know where what community. Uh, uh, you need to let me know about this community. I, 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 I like the right parts, the the, the good parts. There, there's good parts. Community, there, there is in, in places. You look, there is. I gotta, I gotta but, find that part because all I see is negativity, and I feel like I rip my hair out. Sometimes I feel like these people ruin the White Sox for me, and I've been watching the White Sox forever. Like it just, I don't know. Like Deep said, it's like Christmas Eve. I get excited. It's yeah. like I, I finally get that baseball itch. So for sure, it might not be a very good season. I want to know though, what is your favorite like moment, like past? It could be what two thousand five moment. What is your favorite moment as a White Sox fan that you just remember exactly where you were at? So, I mean, other than 05 and then like that that brief playoff run in oh eight, and then obviously game three. There hasn't been much, right? Like <laughs> at least are you talking about the, the Lori Garcia game? Yeah, obviously. Like I would like I and that would the Larry Garcia home runs probably the only like cuz I I mean I was young when 05 happened. Yeah. Oh wait, I just wasn't as into the White Sox um as I am now. But I'd say probably that Larry home run has to be like the defining moment for me just cuz like it was just so like <laughs> unexpected and stuff and it was just I, I like it's sad that that's that's the moment right there like your your 10th man on the roster, utility guy. Um is your is your favorite moment but it might have to be that because there hasn't been much cheer for to be honest no not at all that's why that's why i was asking because i was gonna say and that's the thing this year like we were we'll go over the roster here in a minute i have the picture white Sox obviously just posted it a little bit ago but i mean that's just the thing i mean i don't know how many good moments i think you know from interviews we've seen podcasts we listen to i was just listening to aj's podcast before he came live he had chris gets on earlier today they talked about Crochet. They talked about Mancata. A couple of the other guys asked about, you know, Robert and who they think could be this guy and that guy and Leisure. So there was a lot to it. I would definitely let everybody, if you are watching, we got 92 people in the house right now. So thank you guys all coming and hanging out. And it's just, you know, it's a good listen. So I would definitely do that. But, I mean, that's the thing. I don't really have any expectations for this team. And that's just where I'm kind of at. It's like, like I'm going to go. I'm going to enjoy the game tomorrow. They lose. It is what it is. There's another game on Friday. Or, yeah, right. Yeah, or Saturday. Saturday, that's right. Because Friday is the off day, right? Yeah. So, but, yeah. So, I mean, that's just the biggest thing. So, I'll, I'll ask you first. What are your expectations for this year? And do you have any? Or are you just like baseball's back? So, like, I think I, I've talked to each about this. I mean, probably three, four times a week the last four or five months. Um, but like, I just feel like we just need to let them go and play, right? Like, if we put these expectations, oh, they're gonna win forty games. Like, like that's just that's not that's not that's not the right answer, right? Like, I think I don't have many expectations, but I think. Um, that there is going to be a cleaner brand of baseball this year. I think there's going to be a more fun to watch brand of baseball where that's the expectation for me is I don't want to gauge my eyes out watching a White Sox game 
like I've wanted to the last two, three years oh, where nice. I think, yeah, like I think this year, like there's, there's an expectation for the team to play a different style of baseball just because of what we heard from Getz, what we've heard, you know, in the media from, you know, the clubhouse um, in spring training and stuff. Like, I think that's, that's where I'd kind of set my bar for it um, is just how, how they're going to play. Cause I think like, if you play that way, like they have talent on this team and we'll get into it later when we start talking about more um, person, like guys personally, but like they, there's talent. And I think they got the pieces where they're like, we gets kind of set with AJ today. Like there's a foundation. And I think now you set a standard this year and you build off of that. Not that you want to win this year, but cause you do, you do want to win this year, but you, you know, and realistically you're probably not going to win a division. Um, but you know, if you just stay, like if you, you build that, from the ground up and you, you know, you look at 25, you, you start bringing in some maybe bigger time pieces, like gets alluded to kind of today with AJ, like they're starting to build something. So I think if we just get this year over with, with just, you know, clean brand of baseball, I want to see huge defensive improvements because that's been frustrating. And I think, you know, those things in itself will clean up, you know, the win, the wins and loss column, right? Like it might be a 65, 70 win team, but it'll be way easier to watch than watch them throw the ball all around the field and not hit a running scoring position and chase pitches. Right. Like, I just think those things are kind of my standard to be cleaned up. Yeah. And you, you, you play, you say that, thank God we don't have to have Aaron bummer on our team where he's whipping the ball like this <laughs> and it goes into the outfield and the guy gets inside the Parker it, par, the Parker. I said Parker Parker home inside the park home run. That you know, it just so that's the thing. And again, defense, like they say in football, defense wins championships. And you play defense, the team don't got to score that much. But again, we do, and we've seen it before. Where like you mentioned, you know, I remember last week, Dietrich was mentioned mentioned the game in early May when they played the Reds. Like obviously, a lot of those guys are gone, but we still have Eloy, Vaughn, Robert. If Moncada can learn how to play baseball and just play, on, you know, and so that's just the biggest thing about it. So. I want to go into, before I ask you guys about the opening day predictions and we get into the questions that I gave you guys before we started, I want to show everybody the opening day roster. And let's go through this real quick because there is a lot of new names that are not on the team no more that I did not think. And I, you know, yeah. So we were going to go over the pitchers and I actually got to look on my TV for this one because I can't see it. We got Tanner Banks. We got John Berea. If I get any of these names wrong, Deech, please. Help me. Bravia. Bravia. I'm very bad at names. We got Garrett Crochet, Eric Fetty, Chris Flexton. Who is Deviar Garcia? And he, I, I I didn't even know from the Yankees. He was. Yankees. Yeah, I think he's a former top 100. He was. He's actually. He actually looked pretty damn good in uh, spring training. Well, that's what. Yeah, as as he, uh, he's yeah. one of the few claims that Han made that actually worked out. Okay, so yeah, because they were because they were kind of talking about him. I think on the podcast too. Now you say he was from the waiver claim from the Yankees. We got Tim Hill, Michael Kopech will now be in the bullpen. I want to get your thoughts on that foot long. We got Jordan Leisure, Dominic Leon. I think I said Leone. Right. Leone. Brian Shaw. Leone. Brian Shaw's back, guys. Brian Shaw, Brian Shaw every day. For, for a week. For a week. Every yeah. day. Michael Soroka. Steve Wilson. We got catchers Corey Lee as Max Stassi went on the IL. Of course he did. Martin Maldonado. Infielder and uh, like the infield positions, Paul DeYoung, Nicky Lopez, Yoan Moncada, Gavin Sheets, Gavin Bombs, as these likes to call him, Brendan Shoemake. Was he on the athletics? No, he no, was. On, he was. Uh, go ahead, Deej. He was on. Uh, he was in Triple A, like Gwinnett, I think, with Atlanta. Um, he came over in the Soroka trade. Okay, see, I did. Okay, I did. I must have missed that name because I didn't see that. So, okay, we got Andrew Vaughn. And then the outfielders, we got Andrew Benatendi, Dominic Fletcher, Eloy Jimenez, Kevin Pillar, and Luis Robert. And obviously, if you guys did see, Kevin Pillar came back. They re-signed him after releasing him after a few days. So what do you guys think? 90 and 72, we go into the World Series? <laughs> One can dream. One can dream. I, I know, right? So in, in, in realistic, what do you guys think after? I mentioned that, and that is the opening day rush. Obviously, things can happen. Things can change, injuries, everything else like that. But if these guys stay healthy and everything else like that, what is a realistic projection, you think, with this roster? How many, like, I obviously we can't predict the wins because, you know, whatever. But do you think they approve from last year, I should say? So, Deej, I'll start with you first with this one. Um, 
I mean, there are things, and everyone always rags on the whole, like, well, yeah, if they stay healthy, if they do this. Eloy played, what, 120 games last year? I mean, if you can push him to get 130, 135, and he did make adjustments to his swing, I mean, the hope would be he can hit you 30 home runs. I'm not going to be unrealistic and say 40. That's just, I, I mean, if he does hit 40, whatever. But, I mean, 30 seems reasonable. And it goes the same with Mankata. If they can maintain Mankata staying healthy and consistent most of the year, stuff like that is going to add up. 500 ball is probably, like, the highest, I guess, expectation you should really have. Um, But I honestly think a lot of people are sleeping on the pitching staff. There's just a lot of things that will be addressed, and because they have better defense behind them, the approach – that they're going to have is going to be completely different than last year. So and that's, yeah. And that's the biggest thing. So foot long, do you, what, what do you, uh, what do you got to say about that after looking at the ro- the roster, me reading it? Yes. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back kind of what I was saying before with uh, kind of my outlook on things. Like I'll get into it later, I believe a little bit, just on kind of how they added guys um, to kind of settle those deficiencies they had last year. Um, but obviously like, I think, you know, obviously, like I said, defense is kind of the, uh, it's kind of the main identity of the team this year. Um, we'll see a PR Fletcher, uh, platoon probably for at least until we know how good Fletcher will be, I think. And then obviously Grossman should be up within the next two, three weeks. Deitch, correct me if I'm wrong. Sounds about right. Um, well, yeah, Robbie, like kind of Robbie Grossman. Yeah, Robbie Grossman. Okay. Yep. Yep, we just signed him like a week ago. He'll be up, probably take PR's spot soon, unless PR just breaks coming up um, in the first couple weeks. But, you know, kind of, you know, I agree with everything Deej said and kind of what I was just saying before. Like, I think defense is a huge thing. The only guy that really can't play defense on this roster that I'm looking at, other than Eloy, is, I think, Sheets and Ben Attendee. Um, like, every other guy has a defensive floor that is much higher um, than anything else we've seen last year. Um, because the guys that are going to be in the lineup every day, like Mankata and Robert, they were, and obviously Benetani, that's the outlier. But like Mankata and Benetani, even like Vaughn, like they're they're good defenders. I wouldn't say Vaughn's a good defender, but like it's first base. We're like Mankata and, and Robert are great defenders. So I think defense is really the big thing um, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep harping on that probably the entire night. Well, yeah, and well, and that's just the biggest thing, you know. Like I said, defense wins championships. You play defense, you're not giving up too many runs in your offense. And again, we have guys in the lineup that can go out there. And again, Eloy's changed his stance. He's looked good in preseason. Seen a couple infield singles. I mean, oh my gosh, God, or oh my goodness, last year that would have been like a a no no in an infield single. So it's gonna be really interesting. But. We do start the MLB season, as I said in the beginning, in 21 hours, 20 hours, wherever, whatever game you're watching, shoot, some we're going to start at noon tomorrow. So before I even ask about the rest of the series, what is your opening day prediction, Footlong? What do you you think just for tomorrow before we get to the rest of the series? Do you think they can go? I can't think of the last time they pulled out an opening day win. Well, yeah. last year they beat – are you talking at home or are you talking – Yeah, you know? yeah, at home. Because I've been the last two, so yeah, I know they haven't won the last two. <laughs> they, haven't, they haven't won much the year at home. So, but, but I think I think Crochet has a good start. I think he goes maybe three, four innings. We'll throw, we'll throw a run out there. So let's say one run, four innings. And then we'll have you know we'll have him followed up by – I don't know what they're looking at tomorrow. I'm going to say I'm gonna say a 4-3 White Sox win. That's my prediction. 4-3 White Sox win. I like it. Teach, what do you think, real quick? Um, are we walking out with the dub tomorrow? Are we celebrating me and you? I definitely think they're going to win tomorrow. I just think uh, of all games, I think all of them probably are sitting there pondering it this evening, like, let's win this fan base sweat back at least in the minimal first step of just you win the home opener, it's going to make a lot of people happy. Uh, yeah. And that's all this really comes down to. I, even for people who are like, oh, they're going to be horrible this year, that should be the exact opposite of what you want because essentially Chris Getz is trying to sit here and convince Jerry Reinsdorf that the foundation that he's laid is worth building upon. And 
if they show zero progress and lose si- or win 60 games, I mean, how much are you will- willing to think he Jerry Reinsdorf's going to open his checkbook? Unless there's an ulterior motive, but I, I mean, there's very little reason unless this year they actually can show that they're going to stay in ball games. You're not going to see these huge blowouts or games where you have it completely under control until the sixth inning and then just completely collapse. Um, and I'll say the Sox are going to homer at least twice tomorrow. Uh, I mean, I think that will be more than they did last year because all I remember is that it was a hit parade for the Giants and they were just going in circles and I was just ready to leave by the fifth inning and I was shoving a burger down my throat. I'm like, this is bull crap. So I hope so, man. So I'll ask you that question in a little bit, but I want to go through the list because I'm I'm sure that's uh, I, how how I have the list is how I'm going to try to go down just so you guys know. Now I'm kind of going up everywhere. So the next thing is who has to step up? Who do you guys think has to step up this year that needs to to prove that we can win more than and more than the games they did last year? And again, I'm not I don't expect too much from this team, but let's just improve something. So. Deej, I'll start here with you. Who do you think needs to step up the most? Pitcher, hitter, coach, anybody? I guess I'll answer it in two parts. Eloy and Mankata need to step up, I mean, for their own sake, because not that they won't get paid, but the amount in which they can get paid is very dependent on how they perform this year. Um, And some of the success of the actual ball club is, again, dependent on how they perform this year. So, they both need to show they can stay healthy and play consistently. Um, Eloy tends to struggle when he does go on the IL from recovering. So he'll come off the IL and for two weeks not hit at all. I, certain things need to change. And then I I do think Pedro Grafal needs to prove himself in the sense of just show that last year was an anomaly and that with new people in power, this whole change is actually possible. That's true. Yeah, and that's that, that's very true. What what do you think, Footlong? Who do you think? Do you agree Eloy and Moncada, or is there somebody else that you're thinking we might, we might maybe not? So I'm thinking more long-term with this just because, you know, we don't know how long, especially Yohan, like he could be gone. Most likely he's gone after this year. Yeah. So I'm going to go Andrew Vaughn. Oh, I like So that. my reasoning behind this is, I like, he's made progress – at least like home run wise every single year. If he's on this, like on this current pace, he should be flirting with around 30. If we can have a guy with 30 bombs like that, like I'm not worried about the pitching and defense. I'm worried about the offense. What's up? Luis Robert is the goat. What's up? Keep going. Like I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys probably agree with that, but um if we can have, like, well, I'm going to say, you know, Yoan, Eloy, and Luis, no matter what, are going to be, like, our main three source of hitting. And I think everyone kind of sleeps on Vaughn a little bit. And I'm not the biggest fan of his, but I think that in order to stay in, like, the long, long-term plans to be here and be that next, you know, great White Sox first base, and this is a make-or-break year for him. So I'm going to go with him. That That's my pick. I like it. There we go, man. So, uh, I, and I agree. And I was listening to uh, the Chuck Garfine podcast. Uh, him and Ryan did the season preview, and he made and they made a good point where Vaughn's been the guy that seems like every year he's like getting better and better, and he's getting like he went from I think they said like I forgot how many home runs, and then he had eighteen, and then you know so it that's the thing. And I I think one of their predictions was thirty and a hundred, and I think Vaughn is able to do that. I think you know he, he had a quiet good year last year for as bad as we were. He was always that guy that even if we were sucking, he would always go out there and still hit a couple RBIs, and they do the little weird thing that they do. And let's hope they, I pray that they don't come out and they're doing some weird thing or we're doing some wave and like just 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 hit the ball and and win some games and then start doing something. You know, I believe so, his numbers were slightly lower last year. Actually, were they? I was looking at that before. Were they last year? Because I the I, Chuck, I just Chuck up, was giving me wrong info. Dang, Chuck, Chuck. So I just pulled up his um, his fan graphs here. Chuck. So obviously, batting average, take it for what you want. Thirteen points lower. Seven points lower on the on base percentage. Mm-hmm. Same exact slugging, and the weighted on base average was six points lower, and then the same X W O B A, and then ten. Points lower in the weighted weighted runs created plus. 
Gotta love it. Okay, well, I guess everything I just said doesn't matter, and Chuck Garfrin lied to me because that's not what but, he said. But, <laughs> but his projections do look like he's, at least from the zips and the steamer projections and all of the projections they have on fan graphs, like, he does look like he's bound for a good year, whether that's accurate or not. Like, obviously, we don't know. But they have him anywhere from 106 to 113. So it's it, – he's, he's a tough case. But, like, if he gets – like if 30 like he's on pace for 30 bombs the way he's going he had 15 his rookie year 17 21 25 so if you yeah. can get so you're looking at the 20 30 range i think that would be perfect for what we're looking for yeah and that and that's the biggest thing where it's like you know we're just and that's just like it, like i i think get said it or maybe everybody is if, if we could get like 130 plus games out of all of these guys and like we saw like eloy do it robert we saw Robert play great last year, and that's the thing. Like, if they could just stay healthy and we play better defense, who knows? Again, and I don't want to have no expectations, but maybe, again, maybe they're better than we expect. But until we see it and until this and that, it's like you got nothing and you got to win the fan base. That's why, like, as Deep said earlier, if they win tomorrow, you're going to have everybody going home. And I know it's one game. It is what it is. I remember last year we beat the Astros. We always have that game in Houston. But, I mean, that's just the thing. Opening day – in Chicago, no, hopefully nice weather. Like it just, yeah, I don't know. I get, I just feel better when they win, and everything tastes better, and life is great for a day. So, I don't know, but that's just the biggest thing with that. So, I agree with, I agree with both of you, and I, like I said, I think Vaughn is the one that's going to be able to step up the most, and if if they both can stay healthy, I think Eloy and Yoan can be good. But I one of the guys that again, like it is what it is. But I also think that we us having De Young and Lopez is going to be very like not even underrated, but I think it's going to be very good to see like different guys that like that can do what the, needs to be done at the position. And obviously De Young's a placeholder for Colston and everything else like that. But I mean, it is what it is. I don't know. So we'll have to see about all of that. But before I get in to ask you about what you think and can Eloy and Moncada show up for the team, do you guys see Pedro lasting the year? Yes or no? I'll start with you, Footlong. Yeah, unless – so I was listening to the um, – to Chuck's podcast today, and he kind of summed it up well. Like, unless it's catastrophic, like where we're – I think he said like 7 and 27, it's going to – like it has to be bad for Pedro to get fired um, early. Which I like, like I don't think that'll happen. I think he'll stay the year regardless, unless something like that were to happen. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna say he stays the year. Geech, what do you think? And do you think we win seven games? Do we win more than seven games in April? <laughs> the um, well, I think Chris gets earlier when he was taught. Well, he was asked the direct question of what does he look for in a manager. And he said he was asked that as a player, and he pretty much just said getting the most out of, like, the players that you have on your team. So um, I, as long as they are somewhat competitive in games and you actually can enjoy watching it, whether they win or lose, and that's just a very basic, like, fan standpoint – I don't, I don't know what purpose it would serve to, like, fire Grafal in the middle of the season. It's almost like causing more turmoil after you've already sat and completely ripped the organization apart last season. So um, I think Getz will ride him out. I, I have some hope that Pedro will get it turned around, and hopefully last year was more on people and things that were out of his control, and they've kind of – all gotten it together so that they all are on the same page here. Hey, well, and yeah, and that's just the bit, and I, yeah, and that's the thing. Like I, I just, I was thinking about, it, and that's you're absolutely right with that. It's just like unless if it, and, and again, I still, it's, bro, I still remember having the conversation. I bring it up all the time where me and you said nothing could be better than when we were eighty one and eighty one, and it just gives me anxiety. But I feel like nothing could be worse than what last year was and what we saw last year. So. We'll have to see what happens. But, yeah, I don't think, like I said, unless we go, like, 5 and 25 in April, I think Pedro is whatever. And, again, just play good baseball. Even if they're at 500, I think I was talking to you about this on the phone or a few days ago. Like, they play 500 baseball. Like, that's not, like, it's not bad. It's better and it's, you know, and we'll have more games and more wins to talk about because last year was just not a fun time. Foot long. We, we had, like, three weeks, bro, where it was just that, that, that was all we had and the rest was just us miserable as heck. So, 
Yeah, I'm sure you know. Right. As a Sox fan, it wasn't a very good time. Yeah. So, nope, so I, I back remember. to Eloy and Moncada. Do you guys think? And what do you think? And or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can Eloy and Moncada show up for this team? Do you think they want to? Do you think they want to be here? Do you think Yo Yo is already planning his music career in the next state or the next town, whatever he's trying to do? So, Deech, I'll start with you. What do you think with uh, this one? I mean, both have club options next year. Yoans is definitely – I think Eloy is pro- – you could argue Eloy might be safe just because his is, I think, what, $16.5 million or something around that, whereas Moncada yeah. like $25 million. Um, So much money for that, man. So – I think both of them have the – Eloy playing 120 games last year does give me a bit of confidence. If they strictly keep him at designated hitter, work with him on – Getz alluded to they have really made some adjustments in the training and all the, I, I believe, analytics and a ton of different stuff that previously was not there. So the hope is that you can have both of them. I'll say even if you have them healthy for 130 games, that's a huge improvement and – Eloy, his swing looks a lot better. Um, he doesn't look as restricted. Mancada, he's not going to hit for power, but he's a two hitter, which I know some people argue. Well, some two hitters like hit a bunch of. It's like, well, I mean, really at this point, you just want Mancada to get on base as much as he can, continue to play good defense, and I mean, occasionally he's going to hit for power. So it's yeah. possible. It's just health is the real big dependent thing, honestly. Yeah. It's always been like that. I swear. Every time I see, every time I see that little piece of paper they use to write the IL since I'm like, here we go again. So, so what, what do you think, Footlong? Do you think that we, uh, that we, uh, so, that, we can, that we can trust and that they're going to show up? Yes. Yeah. I think so. My my explanation for Yohan, I think where this team is at, like I'm worried more about getting on base and playing great defense. And I'm not, like, if he could have, like, a season like he had in, what was it, 2021, I believe, when he he was, like, a four or five war guy just because he got on base a shit ton and then was able to, he played a good, he had a good glove at third base. Like, something like that would be perfectly fine for me. Um, where Eloy, it's different because he doesn't have that, um, that outlook where Eloy has to hit 30 bombs or something to even, like, be worth, you know, talking about you know um but he's worked on a swing i heard on the chucks podcast he said something how he was working with his godfather i guess that's his hitting coach yeah take that for what you want um about getting the ball up in the air and he looked really good in the spring so i obviously it's spring training you don't want to put too much thought into it but if he can build off what he did in spring training and i think he can like he's a he's a good hitter he's always been a good hitter when healthy but he has to stay healthy, and when he does get hurt, because it's going to happen, it's just it's baseball. You have 162 games. He can't take three weeks to find a swing again like he does every time. I feel like that is what kind of messes him up a little too much is because he's always taken three, four weeks to find a swing after getting hurt. Like it's it's really just bothersome. But, yeah, that's just what I'm thinking there. No, I agree with you. And that, that last statement you said is absolutely right, where it's just like, bro, like, I get it. Like, yes, it takes a little bit, but, like, it just <laughs> – like, I don't know, man. Like, like I always talk about it, too, with, like, how how younger these guys are and how they're, like, kind of, like, are, like at least my age and stuff like that where, you know, and it's just, like, the mentality that they have. It's just, like, I don't know. Like, it just – it is what it is. We've seen them have it. We've seen them have good careers or good good careers, good seasons and stuff like that. So it's in them somewhere. It's just more pulling it out of them. So I hope they can, because if they do, those two could be a huge, and they just play with the chip on your shoulder. Go out there and say, you know what? You want to talk that crap? Let Chuck, let Chuck eat his words. Let Ryan eat his words. Let AJ eat his words. Let everybody that's been talking about you all off season, eat their words and go out there and just show them what you can do. Because if like tomorrow, hypothetically, the Sox win because of a Moncada or Eloy, that, oh my God, Eloy and Moncada are back, baby. White Sox are back. We're going, it's 162 season. There's, there's like so many perspectives I'm thinking about in my head that no matter what way the games goes tomorrow, it's going to be either very good, very bad, or like, it just, yeah. So, let's just hope they both go out there and play nine innings tomorrow. It's one day at a time. 
If you get good seasons from Elo and Yohan, that boosts the ceiling of this team. Like, if you get, let's say, Elo hits 30 bombs, it's working like an 850 to, eight. let's say, 850 OPS. Yohan's playing good D. He's walking. Let's say he's around 800, 850 OPS. Like, then you might be approaching the 75 win, the 80 win range. Because if you have Luis hitting and you have those two guys hitting, that's a third of your lineup right there that's hitting in the top, let's say, Five? 30 in the league. Yeah. Like, just those three guys specifically. Like, like there's a lot to be said about that if that can happen. Obviously, I'm not banking on it, but if you get all if you get all three of those guys going and then even better, you get AV to come back – or not come back, but more, you know, take a stride and then, and then Benetton to come back, hopefully healthy. Like, the top half of your lineup is very, very good. And then you never know what's like. De Young looked really good in spring training. He was hitting the ball out. I think he probably led the team in home runs in spring training. He was like the only one to hit anything. Um, and then obviously like I, like Lopez, like I thought he did a good job getting on base. I'm a big fan of his for many reasons. Naperville, um, like there's yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that's part of it. Um, <laughs> but like yeah, like I just think that I think the ceiling is there if these guys want to come through because the team is not as bad as everyone makes it seem. That's, that's yeah. my outlook on it. I mean, yeah, if, like, if you put this team together, like if you put it on paper and you take it where you put like Vaughn at first, whatever, you write it out and look at it, it doesn't look like an awful, awful team. Yes, it doesn't look like we're going where the Dodgers or we're the Braves or this and that. But, I mean, they're still they're not a bad team. And that's the thing, as you said, with Yohan and Eloy, they make us win probably five, eight more games, depending on whatever it is. And you never know. There's always these guys in sports that has a breakout year, a breakout career, a no-hitter, uh, this or that, just like in the NFL where we always see it, especially in fantasy. There's always these guys that come out of nowhere, and by week eight we're starting them in fantasy. So I hope so. I'm thinking about doing a fantasy baseball draft tonight just to make my – I don't know. I'm thinking about it, but I don't know. Eloy and Moncada, please play good baseball. That's all I care about. So we talked about Eloy and Moncada. We've talked about a lot of the guys that are on the team. But right now I want to ask you guys, who's somebody on the team that maybe we haven't talked about, a first-year player, a guy that they signed the contract? Maybe somebody doesn't know if they're not a, you know, diehard White Sox fan like us or they just kind of watch baseball. So before I give you guys my answer, my answer, for long, I'll start with you. Who you got with, like, somebody maybe they should keep an eye out. Or maybe we'll be like, oh, my gosh, in a couple months that – this guy's carrying us. So this is going to sound crazy, but if there's a guy that's going to break out in this team, like out of nowhere, it's going to be Corey Lee. Corey Lee. Um, yes. That, <laughs> Why are you shaking your head, Beach? Do you agree? <laughs> yeah, Corey Lee. Dude, his power is insane. And like defensively, like, that's never a concern. His bad is what was horrible last year. So, Troll. All right, so let, let me. Yeah, yeah. tell me so why. Here's persuade me. So, we, so there was there was info that went out last year that the Astros were making him sell out for contact, and it changed his entire swing. DJ, I know we talked about this a little bit. Um, he was selling out for contact. He was just trying to make contact with the ball. I don't know if that was because he was striking out a lot or what was the deal, but they were trying to make him sell out for contact. He got to the major leagues and he looked like, and like he did, he did all right in AAA last year from my memory. Um, and then he got to the major leagues and looked like he belonged in Winston Salem. Like there was something obviously wrong and it wasn't a talent thing per se. I think it was a mechanical thing. And then we saw him coming to spring training this year. Again, I wouldn't look at results much as much as spring training than like actual like physical changes. And he looked like he revamped his entire swing where now he's elevating everything. He's just letting his natural power kind of build up and then put that in the baseball. And he had a hell of a spring, a hell of a spring. Like there was, a, I mean, there was probably out of the 10, 12 games he played, probably eight or nine of them, he had an extra base hit. Like that's just off the top of my head. I don't know what exactly it was, but it felt like that. Like he was always just driving the ball. He had a couple of nice opposite field um, pokes there. Like, like he's a guy that, in a week, like, you know, like talking, catching wise, like it's not like Stassi and Maldonado aren't their temporary guys, right? Like he, especially with Stassi out, like Corley has a good chance to step up and be a guy. 
So that's my pick. I just think he has, like I said, with the information that I know about him in Houston and how he worked on the swing and how, you know, Marcus James and, um, and the hitting staff out in Arizona kind of worked with them. They really revamped his swing and he looked really good just mechanically. And I think he's going to see better results this year. Hey, I like it. You persuaded me because again, I was very high on Corey Lee last year. I remember when I was like, oh, he's coming from the Astros. I'm like, this is good. And then he just, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, I like guys like that because they come on and, and then all of a sudden you got Corey Lee jerseys and people are like, it's Corey Lee day or all these, you know, whatever the heck. So I like it. Deach, who you got? Um, I, I kind of had two. Obviously, the one was Corey Lee. As you saw, I reacted immediately. <laughs> I've never seen you react so fast. Yeah. I was like, dang, okay. Yeah. Um, so he, t- he took that one right out of my mouth. But uh, the other one's Fetty. I honestly just took mine, man. What, I, what? <laughs> hey, I've heard that the entire organization is like, vi- like they think they got a steal with Fetty. So, um, I mean – Everyone kind of looks at it like, oh, he pitched in, what was it, like the KBO or whatever last year and won that award. And, like, I've seen people compare it to, like, double A or triple A here. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. I mean, Brian Bannister, I think, clapped back at someone on Twitter the one day who was sitting uh, questioning kind of Fetty. And he flat out said, Fetty, I think he added a pitch. And then, uh, I mean, he works out at the same place that, uh, who is it, Logan Webb? Isn't that who he referenced? Bannister, I think so, yeah. About him. Um, I mean, he's a guy who I, you're not paying a ton. You have him for next year. So it's someone you'd like to see break out because guys breaking out is a very, especially with Lee, force gets his hand to decide if he's going to try and dump Stassi or Maldonado on someone. Or, I mean, because Stassi's contract is free. The Braves are paying almost all if not all of it so some of these guys it'll be nice to see them force their way it's i'm glad jordan leisure and nick nastrini appear to have made the opening day roster um so we actually had a question about that because the louise robert fan the goats he asked is nastrini the fifth starter because he he wasn't on the list so did he just did he just not make this list um, they're they going to send Shaw down, I believe, and they're going to call Nestrini up. I oh, okay. think Scott Merkin said it on Twitter. I'll pull it up. Um, oh, okay. he will be the fifth starter because they don't need, they rolled with nine bullpen guys until April 3rd or something. There's something with the scheduling. Um, let me okay. confirm that for you, but yes, I believe, I believe I did see Nestrini. Yeah. Two hours ago, Nestrini will be the fifth starter, but isn't need till April 3rd. So Shaw will be here till April 3rd. And then he'll likely be sent down or DFA'd or whatever. And then Estrini will take that fifth spot. Okay. I li- okay. I appreciate the question, Luis Robert. And it helps. It ho- okay. That that makes sense because, okay. Because I was They're wondering doing- when I saw it, I was going to ask you guys. I was going to be like, there was this. Because I was like, I heard Estrini did good. And I heard like, because like, yeah, I wasn't able to watch too many of the preseason games. So I didn't see like too much. But everything I heard, it seemed like he was good. So, so anything else you got to say about Fetty, Deach? I just think he's going to have a big year. I mean, it's going to – guys like Soroka and Fetty are going to have to give you pretty consistent good outings um, where they're not getting yanked in like the fourth or fifth inning because I think that's going to play a big role in the success of this team. Garrett Crochet obviously is not going to go deep in games, at least to start the season as he continues to ramp up uh, to starter innings. But if guys like Fetty, if Fetty gives you six innings, every inning they can give you extra of, I would say, over five is going to save the bullpen, which the last two years, we've had good bullpens, but we've burned through them because every starter went like four innings for the first three weeks of the season. I I feel like we've been talking about this since episode one of the Southside Boys, Deach. Like, it's just... Yeah, don't burn through your bullpen. And, I mean, they have put guys in the bullpen that are more capable of throwing multi-innings as opposed to all these, like, one-trick ponies. So, I mean, you just kind of hope, like, guys. Fetty, they took a risk to an extent because he was god-awful when uh, he was with the Nationals. So, I mean, some people just saw him as that. But, I mean, trust in Bannister is all I have to say. Every pitcher they've added – tends to be someone who Bannister is very capable of working with to make adjustments and everything. So I like it. 
Well, it, since since you already took my guy, what the heck, man? Fatty, I was all excited. I was like, I'm gonna do something, man. And then and then man. anyway. So I I, I was I, I was smart enough though to pick another one because I just in case because I was yeah. But no, I think you're absolutely right with Fetty. And I've been playing a lot of the MLB the show, and he's now become my favorite pitcher on the roster because like <laughs> he's so good. And obviously it's a game, but anyway, you know. So I'm gonna say leisure or no Strini. As as you guys said, Nostrini is gonna be the fifth starter. And I like guys like that. They're gonna be the fifth starter. They really don't have too much to like, you know, either, you know, they're gonna go out there and he I just hope these guys don't have a lot of pressure on them. Don't go out, just play baseball, play ball. I think I think I heard AJ say it on the podcast 50 times, and the guys on there just play ball, play ball. And that's literally all they gotta do is just go out there, have fun, play some baseball. I don't know if you guys saw that little hype video that they did, but it looked like they had, were having a little fun in the dugout. So We'll have to see. And I also did see a comment by Luis Robert. Can we get rid of the jacket too? Like, I, I get it. But until they're doing something, I don't want to see no little jackets or this and that, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to say Leisure and Nostrini. But I also think somebody that was in that brave trade, I'm not saying he's going to be the greatest. But Steve Wilson, I think, could be a, a, a decent bull, bullpen arm that, you know, people are kind of forgetting. Again, we got five guys for Aaron Bummer. So I'll take it. And again, we talked about it be or before in the beginning. They're at the Aaron C's Bummer. Trade. Huh? Was it Wilson in the Padres trade? Was it the Padres? Yeah, he was in the Seas trade, yeah. Oh, was it the Seas trade? Then who was the bull? Yeah, he came back with uh, – you're okay. thinking of uh, – Who am I thinking of? My bad. Did we get a reliever back, DJ? I thought I we think. did. I thought we did. We I guess not. Okay. Anyway, the Padres. Oh, shoot, you're thinking of Schuster. You're thinking of Schuster. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, you got Schuster. He'll be in Schuster at the start of the year, probably in rotation. Okay, yep. I'm sorry. But still, Wilson, I think I, – still, they. I, 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 I eh, got – you know, anyway. Steve Wilson, I think, will be okay, decent. So we'll have to see what happens. But there's a lot of guys on here that I think people get excited for. And, again, like there's not going to be a lot of good games, but there's going to be games that are fun to watch. There are going to be a couple games. They do score 15 runs like they did last year against Cincinnati. There'll be a couple games that are not the greatest. We're maybe leaving in the fourth inning. But, you know, as you said, Deach, and I want to remind before, I think it's going to be a lot of like where we saw last year, like you said, they would walk one guy and we knew the game was over. I think we'll see a lot maybe different this year where, you know, there might be some games like that, but I think not so much where we're seeing them being able to get out of a walking the, the first batter or as Hawk used to like, or as Hawk used to say, the dreaded leadoff walk. Like, I think that won't be so dreaded hopefully anymore. And if they could bunt the ball, that'd be fantastic. The other guys during in pre pre preseason spring training bunting the ball was great. So yeah, but Obviously, obviously, I need to start making sure I look at these guys' names because I, I swore I thought I saw Wilson in that trade, but I guess not. But you're absolutely right. I was wrong. But now that we did that and everything else like that, I think it's time. Is there anything else I missed or anything else you guys want to talk about before we get into starting to preview the first two series? I think that's it, really, at least for me. Um, did you got anything that I missed or you want to bring up before we – get into like previewing these and the brave series um i mean i guess you could just point out obvious everything that was an issue last year they have addressed and you can actually i mean guess gets is willing to at least explain it and like point you in the direction of his logic and Footlong has looked into it a little bit more, but I, he was telling me yesterday regarding the bull. I mean, you can expand on this if you want mm -hmm. uh, bullpen and how just there's certain things that you can look at and say, okay, I can see they actually addressed it as opposed to just telling us they did. So, yeah, I can get into that real quick. Yeah. So I did a lot. I did a lot of research on this cause I was just like kind of curious about like what was going on. So, I was just looking. Just start from the most basic thing ever. Record, twenty-four and thirty-eight from the bullpen. That was the 29th, 29th in wins, and twenty-ninth in losses. Even so, what that tells me is we were leaving a lot of games up to our bullpen, and a lot of times they were blowing it. So now we have an improved bullpen. We look at we did dive deeper in those numbers. So we had a four point three. Uh, walks per nine, which is 25th in the league. We had a 4.88 bullpen ERA. And then we were going to hit the hard hit percentage was 39%, which I don't remember what exactly that was the rest of the league. But that's, I mean, if you think about that, that's one every three. I mean, that's more than one every three. 
um, batters hitting the shit out of the ball. Um, so I just, you know, I started to look at kind of what those numbers and what, you know, what the guys are brought in, right? So, like, if you look at Brebbia, he's projected at 3.05 walks per nine. I believe last year was a little more inflated, but, like, lifetime, he is known for throwing strikes. Wilson, same kind of thing. Doesn't get hit too hard either. He's around the 34% to 34% range. Um, even Dominic Leone, he's at a 3.86 to a 4. Uh, our... Our new, our new Aaron Bummer, Tim Hill. He our gets new Aaron. The ground he said the lot. new Aaron Bummer. Fifty nine point eight percent ground ball rate. He's at a three point three walks per nine. I think he's going to be pretty good looking into it. Um, like his walks per nine, it's very good. So that's just kind of that in a nutshell. Of I think the the bullpen is gonna it's gonna help us um, more than – because last year it hurt us, and I think it burned us in a lot of ways. Even Chuck was talking about it. He said, like, something like Kendall Graven only had eight saves, and that was the highest on the team. That Like, that's – That's right. That's more, right. Oh, man, had more saves in the COVID year. Like That's right. Yeah. That, he, oh, my God. And Chris, really, that was the one thing Chris did say. He didn't – he didn't clarify a closure. He said, we'll see what happens, some guys and everything. Mm-hmm. And AJ even asked him, like, who you think he's thinking about, and he said Kopech, and he said no. So – I mean, that's just – it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with that because, again, the bullpen does a lot of things. And, again, it all falls into place. The starters can go at least five, sometimes six. The bullpen doesn't need to eat up so many innings. All these guys are a little bit, you know, and it's just like – like I remember going, I think it was the 4th of July game. I think they were playing the Blue Jays. They were doing good. It was all going down, and then they gave up a walk, a hit, and then Vlad came out and just decided mm-hmm. to smack the ball out on the 35th and Shields, and it was over. And Joe it was Kelly, like they I think, came- right? Huh? Yeah, Joe Kelly. Yeah, yeah I was, I was out yeah. that game. I remember that. Oh, it, it's so it's so weird. Like, the when people say that, I'm like, I was at that game, and the fact that, like, sometimes, like, the same people were, I'm like, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, you never, you know, you never know who you could run yep. into. So, yeah. But, yeah, that's just the thing where it's just like, you know, so, and I'm just, I'm really interested to see what happens with it. And that's why, again, I, I say it a lot always with like the wrestling. Don't get it, your expectations too high because then you're not, don't get let down. Just enjoy. I'm just trying to enjoy this summer and the fact that I got something to watch every day. Going to be good, some bad, some, you know, this and that. But me and Deach and, you know, hopefully you some more come. We still got to come on here and talk about it. And, you know, so. I will say sure. I, a lot of people complain you know? about them not necessarily uh, closer to start the season and I am completely okay with them not doing that. Last year everyone sat there and demanded someone be named a closer and I mean they tried Lopez, Lopez was horrendous. Uh, there were I mean don't put pressure on guys, let them sit there and feel it out. I use the whole like based off of the situation approach and if you see someone who you're like all right, this guy has like that dog in him where you want him but I'd rather guys sit there and try and figure it out and find their place by playing. I mean, even if it's the first month, you kind of go closer by committee. There's really nothing right. There's nothing wrong with that because your expectation isn't like we're going to dominate the division. It's like, let's figure out where we are. So like at the end of this season, we know more of where our direction is headed. So. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I, I and and uh, football. I appreciate all those stats, man. Those were there was those are some good stats. I, I Can I should get into one more. What 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 do you got? I love I love stats. You got to give me some. Oh, more. this is the most interesting I think of everything. So ground, I was looking at ground ball rates. Okay. Um, we were ele- out of the bullpen. We were eleventh highest in the league. Um, in the rotation, we were 29th. Oh wow! So. But just connecting that information back to what we have this year, we have two gold glove level middle infielders now where I think now we can we can kind of build a team around that. And I, and I think we'll see, especially in the rotation, we'll see that number go down because we're, I mean, we're looking at like even a guy like Soroka, who's always been around the 45 to 50 range. Um, just to going through my stats here. Um, Flexen was around 40. Um, let's see. Fetty's Fetty was around 44, um, in his, in his career, or sorry, he was projected at 44. He's around 49 for the career. So like now they're going to focus on those ground ball pitchers because they have guys behind them that can field those baseballs, right? Like where before 
We had, yeah, so it was nice. We had the 11 highest ground ball rate out of the bullpen. Yes, that was probably Aaron Bummer for a lot of it. <laughs> but we had we had Tim Anderson, a shortstop. Like, yeah. they, like you can't, like, there, there's correlations between. I mean, how many games last, last year? year. I, I was just, you, like, mm-hmm. took it out of my mouth. You know, like, that's what I was mm-hmm. just going to say. Look at how many games we watched last year where it was a ground baller went through his legs or the one where the guy was running home and all he had to do was throw it home and he looked the other way. Yep. It just, like, you know. So keep going. I'm sorry. I mean, to cut you off. My bad. Yeah, no, I mean, that's pretty much it. I just think there's correlations between what went wrong last year and then these underlying stats that people really don't realize. Like 29th in ground ball rate, which means a lot of times our pitchers were keeping the ball in the air, which usually is not good, especially in our ballpark, where I think this year we're going to see that it's not going to be as bad um, just because we got like Soroka and Fetty are both, you know, around 45%. Like that's, that's pretty solid. Crochet, obviously, we'll see. Um, a little more as the season goes on. But yeah, like I just think that now that we have um now that we have actual middle infielders, now we have a defense behind our pitchers, it's gonna be easier for us to throw strikes. I think that's the biggest thing. And then hopefully turn those into ground balls, makes innings go smoother, helps the pitchers out. Where last year it just felt like our starters were just throwing everything up and then it made it harder on the rest of the team, right? And, and we were terrible defense. We're like, I think we're 29th, 30th in the league in defense. So just to watch those ground ball rates will be interesting. Um, that's just what I dug up in my free time yesterday. So hey, take I, that with how you want it. But, yeah, that was just kind of what I was looking at. I, hey, I appreciate it, man. I will build on that, too. I do think overall, like our pitching staff, strikeouts will probably be down from what we've seen in previous mm-hmm. years. They used to live and die by the strikeout. Even when we were shitty, I feel like we were what? Probably at least top 10 in strikeouts in the league. Oh, um, easily. Pitching end because, I, I mean, even Kopech would sit there. He'd give you strikeouts, but then you get shelled, like, when he wasn't striking people. Oh, out. like last opening day. I yeah. just hope it's not the same. But before we do get into, before we do pre-start preview and opening day, I want to say that we got 201 people in here from X. Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, wherever we're at. So I want to say thank you to everybody. But I need 203 of you to do me a favor. Hit that like button. And we are only one subscriber away to 1840. We're trying to get to 1900 by next Saturday. WrestleMania Saturday, everybody. As it's the grandest stage of them all. It's the biggest tag team match of all time. We got Roman Reigns and The Rock taking on Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins. So... If anybody wants to hit that subscribe button, you want to join me all week for WrestleMania week, do that. So, now that we did that and we shouted out all the good people for joining us here today, I want to say thank you. Thank you to all the Footlong Comiskey Dogs friends coming and hanging out. I see a bunch of you in the chat. We'll get to the chat. So, thank you guys coming and hanging out. So, let's get to and let's start previewing these games. We got the Tigers, and then we go and play the Atlanta Braves. And Deach and I remember the last time they played the Atlanta Braves. So, Let's go start with the Tiger series and uh, for long, I'm just going to ask you like, well, how many games you think we're going to win? And then like, what you think, like, like who will have like the best series. So my, or tomorrow, I said Monday, Thursday, March 28th, we got Scooble taking on Garrett Crochet. And then Friday, they have an off day. If it rains or anything awful happens tomorrow, they will play on Friday, but let's play. Let's hope that don't happen. Saturday, we have a, I think it is a, I think it's a 310 start. Is it a, is it a night game on Saturday? It's a 110. It's a 110. Is it one, oh, I see. Okay, I see it now. 110 start. We got Kenta Maia coming over from the uh, Minnesota Twins, now over on the Tigers. He just doesn't want to leave the division. I don't know why. And he's taking on Soroka, Mike Soroka. He's going to be taking on, he'll be taking the bump on Saturday. And then at 110 again on Sunday. Easter Sunday, happy Easter, everybody. We got Eric, we got Eric Fetty taking on Jake Flaherty. And that's another one that I think people seem to forget that Flaherty went to the Tigers. The Tigers, you know, the Tigers were that team that kind of like were, you know, they kind of sucked in the beginning. And then all of a sudden they made the rise and they were the team. They had like the best record at one point, all that stuff. So I'll start with you for long. What are your what we we talked a little bit about opening day, what but overall series, what do you think? Do you think the Sox go in two out of three? Do you think they just win opening day? What is your thoughts on this opening series here in Chicago against the Detroit Tigers? I like the matchups a lot. Um, I did not know how bad Detroit's pitching was 
Um, for a team that's supposed to win, or that can win the division with Kenta Maeda as a two, and he was like the number six in the Twins rotation last year once he came He's back from true. injury. And don't we hit Maeda usually pretty well? Sometimes. Like, tip, typically, I feel like typically, it could be hit yeah. or miss. More than usual, I'll say that. Uh-huh. He's had a couple games. Um, He's got us. I think two out of three is very feasible. I just, I just don't know exactly what we're going to get out of our hitters. Where, like, the pitching matchups, you can argue – all three. I mean, Google's going to be tough um, opening day. But, like, if we don't win opening day, I think there's two easily winnable games after that. Um, so, I, I'd say two out of three. I think I think that's 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 a good spot. I think two out of three for the first for the first series. Do you want me to go in the Atlanta series? Or do you want to each talk first? Yeah, no, you could actually do that. I just – I was going to say, I don't know the pitching rotation. Yeah, looking, have, they I'm, don't I'm have them. So. Right now. So, if you want to just give overall, obviously, we don't know what will happen on opening weekend. Anything could obviously happen, but mm-hmm. we get through opening weekend, everything's good. What do you think the White Sox can do? And do you think it's better than Deech, as we saw on your birthday last year? It wasn't a great day by Michael Kopech. And I think we play them at home this year. So, do you think they'll play better than they did last year against the Because that whole series was just not fun to watch. Last year, didn't they win two out of three after the All-Star break? Did did they win after did they win after the yeah. two games after yeah. your birthday? It was the game where they were awful and gave up like the one the game they lost was like terrible because it did, was did they? I forgot, man. See you see how great Wait. my mind is. I forgot. I, I think I, they I, lost two. It out was of right three. after the All Star break. And I think they won. I know they won two out of three. Okay, so then yeah. Okay, so then it was just they, I, I, they just let it all out on the first game. I just remember Kopech going out yeah, there and giving up like eight right. runs. So. But so I guess, I guess okay then I guess I should say do you think we take two out of three against them again? No, <laughs> I, I think I think I if we get, we'll be three and three I think after the two series regardless, either that's you know win sweep the Tigers then get swept by the Braves whether that's win one one for the, one for the Tigers and then two from the Braves like it's gonna be I think I'm three and three is about where I'm gonna set myself for both those series. I don't trust the pitching as much in the Braves series. That's going to be Chris Flexen, who I'm not high on. And then um, Nestrini's first major league start, and then probably Crochet again. Um, yeah. So that series may be tough, just looking at the peripherals of it. Yeah, that's but, really true. And you, you were right. They did win. They won 6-5 to five on Saturday, mm-hmm. and then they won 8-1 to one on Sunday. I, I low-key yeah. thought they lost another game, but never mind. Yeah. So, um, so we did play well against them last year, but – you know, who knows? Who that, knows? that was last year, you know, just a good yep, weekend. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. But that's the, you know, so, so, so you're saying three, three and three, either way, before yeah. we go and face, I, I, I forget who we face next. I think it's the Reds and the look. Royals. I forget. We got Kansas City for four. Is, is we played Kansas up for City. four? True. I don't know. I'm saying I'm all the show and I'm going through the schedule, but sometimes I, <laughs> I go through it too fast. Yeah. And then but, uh, for three. And then we come oh, home, play the God. Reds and the Royals, and then oh, Philadelphia, Dang. Minnesota, and then we're back home um, for the rest of the month. Okay. Well, there you go. Now we know the full month. I'm just going to have to remember that now. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. what Joey, I mean, I- Joey just said flex and crochet in that stream. Yes, that will, be the, um, that will be the rotation most likely for that series. Yeah. Appreciate you, Joey, coming and hanging out. Thank you, Joey. But, yeah, and that's, you know – and that's just the thing. There's going to be some days that are just not very good. And, you know, like you said, Nostrini, again, maybe he does have a decent day. But I'm not expecting mm-hmm. nothing. And I'm just going to expect, you know, expect him to get shelled because anything else is better. Like, that's kind of how I feel. I'm just going into every game where it's like we lose. Like, I'll just turn on whatever the heck I was, you know, like it, whatever. It's so, but let's hope that we don't have to see it. And, again, we – and now, and I don't know if everybody does know this, it's like you got, like we all do, but they do play every team again. So we will see them face mm-hmm. the, the the Marlins. We'll see them face the Padres. We'll see them face all the teams, all the guys that were traded to other teams. So that should be interesting. Those are, you know, like the types of games that, you know, people could stay interested in if it's not such a good season. So, Deech, would you want to preview the first two series? And what do you think for overall Tigers and then the Braves? I'm trying not to be overly optimistic. Yeah, don't bro, don't make Justin come on here next week and shred you after we go yeah. like two and four. Um, <laughs> I'll say we'll go. I do think we're going to sweep Detroit. I, I 
I think Detroit, um, the pitching matchups are semi in our favor. And I just think what a better way to start off the season than sweeping at home. Um, then the Braves, I mean, I think we'll win one. I just don't. The Braves are a whole nother like monster in them. So I, they're completely stacked. So oh, they would have to be like completely on their game to not get kind of I mean, maybe they will be maybe they will i hope they play with that chip on their shoulder i hope they do that that would be great if they went out there and just you know so what so you're saying four and two yeah i'll go four and two okay see and i i, I my answer was kind of like in between where i think we're, we're either gonna see like the worst is gonna be like two and four and i think the best will be like four and two but like the middle is like yeah that's what i think like you know i could think like you said, there's going to be games that I think we do have the good matchups. And honestly, looking at the Tigers roster, obviously playing the show is a completely different story. But there's really not many guys. Miguel's not there. Thank I, I love you, Miguel Cabrera, but I'm so happy he's gone. It's like it's like when Aaron Rodgers left the Packers. Go and be on the Jets. I don't care what you do. Just don't play baseball. I know Miguel retired. Great career. But now he can enjoy his family and not have to hit 45 home runs against the White Sox for the next 10 years. So... They don't have Miguel. They don't have other guys. They obviously got swinging, swinging Baez over there, but I mean they got Spencer Torkelson. So they don't, but they don't really have guys that like stand out, like you know. So I think that's doable, and I think it's very, you know, and like you said, Deech, if they go out there and sweep an opening day, bro, what is Twitter going to be like, guys? We're 162 and all. We're going to the World Series. Like these guys are going to go ballistic. Everybody's no, going to be like buying it. season tickets. And then people are going to be, it's just like, you know what I mean? They're going to be buying oh. Fetty jerseys and this and that. So they'll, say, they'll gonna, say, oh, we're going. From, go ahead, Deach. I think you're going to sit for a half a season. And even if they play 500 ball or above 500 ball leading into like June or July, the, I think people are so pissed off that you're just going to see the same shit that we've been seeing all off season where no matter what they do, there's going to be a group that thinks it's funny to sit there and just continuously rag on the like social media intern of the White Sox because it's not like you're talking to Jerry Reinsdorf if you're responding to some person who's getting paid way less than they really <laughs> to get out of college. Bullshit, so. Literally, literally, it's not you're not you're absolutely right, and they'll, that's they'll say yeah they'll say well, we went from 110 wins to 100 or sorry 110 losses to 100 losses now. They'll say shit like that, and it's just it'll be. Oh yeah. my god, I hate. I, I say it all the time. I hate. I hate the internet so much. I lo I would not use it if I didn't do the podcast and everything. It drives me insane. But now that I've pretty much asked everything that I got on the list and everything else like that, let's get to the chat. Let's see what everybody's saying. We got a lot of people in here. We got some people from X. So let's get. Let's see what everybody says. If you guys do got wrestling questions, I know you guys love to walk ask wrestling questions, but. Uh, Footlong, do you watch wrestling, or have you ever watched wrestling? I do not. No. No. Okay. No. Did, did you ever like back in the day? Um, I mean, like Austin not really. Rock and stuff. Like, no, not, no, not really. It's okay. You don't. You don't. Have, you don't have to. It's okay. I just want to ask because, like I said, there might be some. So, all Speaking I remember is like, go ahead. Yeah, back in the day, like I'd had. You remember the the big? It was like the Money in the Bank, the huge yes. like play set. Yeah, I used to have like oh, that was probably now fifteen years ago, but it, yeah, I had one of those. Um, and you know, was, how, yeah, you know how expensive was, those things go for now. Like people uh, sell those things for like three, four hundred dollars. It's ridiculous. They're fun though. I mean, it, that's it, what it, I had though. That was that was, that was my the expense wrestling. <laughs> yeah, you know, what thought, you know what though that that's something. You know, I feel like everybody mm -hmm. has had a little something of it. So. Mm -hmm. You know, we got Jadis in the house though, and we we miss Justin here. Justin will hopefully be back next week. But he says, if you're on here, Deech, if you're on here, y'all play. Just uh, uh, D, uh, uh, I think you answered this last week, Deech. You play MLB, right? Just not as much? Yeah, I play MLB The Show. I didn't get the new one yet. Um, I have a PS4. I'm not overly active into gaming. I'll play occasionally, but. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, not as much, but I'll still play sometimes. I'm, we'll have to do a one-on-one -on -one online. I'll have to get you. We'll, we'll have to like face each other in person or something. That would be kind of entertaining to watch us try to play the MLB the show. I should talk a bunch when I play video games. <laughs> well, that would be entertaining. I am an asshole. When I <laughs> He's that. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Just don't hit me with the controller. We'll be good. Footlong, do you play the show? So 
Typically, yes. But uh, I decided this year I'd give up Xbox for Lent. Um, <laughs> I, I've been I've been insanely busy anyway. I feel you. But like, I, but I've seen some YouTube videos and stuff. I'm kind of looking forward to diving back in on Sunday. So I think probably tomorrow or Friday I'll uh, head on my Xbox, go buy the game real quick, so I can get that all set squared away. But yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. Haven't got into it yet, but that's <laughs> that's my uh, motivation for the weekend now. Hey, there we go. You know, you got to have something yep. to get through the week. You know, like that's kind of like how I feel. Like, you know, sometimes you just got to do it. Thank you, Jadis. Thank you, Steven, for helping us with the audio in the beginning. I was, thank you guys. Sorry. Trying to figure it out. And I think I figured it out. Hopefully. Well, hopefully tomorrow have it good. And hopefully it sounds good tomorrow. So, yeah. But thank you guys for that. What's up, Luis Robert Jr.? First time here in the chat. Luis, I want to appreciate you coming and hanging out. We got Joey. Thank you, Joey. I appreciate you also coming and hanging out. We got Daniel in the house. What's up, Daniel? We got Temple. He says, I'd come on, but I'd have my Philadelphia Eagles cap on, and I may be attacked. <laughs> well, you're, well, you're lucky. This isn't a football show, so, you know, we, we wouldn't attack you too much. I'm out of football now. We're, we're, well, I kind of, I guess. I don't know. The draft is kind of stressing me out, but that's a whole other podcast. Let's see what else we got. We got cool guy in the house. One guy we didn't talk about, and I guess I'll ask you guys this question. Do we see Colston Montgomery by September or before? Um, I don't know. I feel like it was kind of aggressive to put him in AAA. But at the same time, like, he hasn't – I don't think he's ever played a full year of minor no. baseball. No, they say so, he's – Gat said that today that he hasn't played a full Yeah. So give him – yeah, I'd say September, I think. But uh, then I think I heard Chuck say that today. Like, don't make it like a – he said – that was kind of funny. He said, don't give him a scholarship. Don't say, okay, it's just September 1st. Throw him on the roster, right? Like, make sure he's ready. And uh, – but, like, personally, I'm not a huge fan of that move because I think he should have started in Birmingham just because I think Charlotte can kind of be misleading with um, with the, the, the home park there just because of how hitter-friendly it is where – in Birmingham, I think that would be kind of more of a challenge for him, which he ripped up Birmingham when he was there last year. So I don't think that's more of a concern, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hey, well, and that, yeah, and that's yeah, and that's the thing. I just I don't want to rush these guys. We saw what happened when we rushed the other guy. Like, just let them mm. go down there, let them play, mm. let them do like you know. We're not like like we've talked about all episode. We're not winning the World Series. We're not like yeah. you know. And you just have to accept that it hurts. It's the I've been, uh, I was talking to DJ, I've been like, sell, I've been like slimming down my collection and I feel like I'm looking at everything and none of these guys are here no more. It's just like, you know, it just got to get into a new era of White Sox baseball. So I will actually. A fast era. So, so before I get into the next question, DJ, so yeah, what what do you think about Colston? I think he's going to be up by June. June? Okay. And I know that's aggressive, but I'm sorry. I watch all these other ball clubs with their top prospects. I mean, there were people who were questioning whether he would actually start. To, and I personally was, it didn't ever think he would start like opening day on the major league roster, but there were people who I saw and you know, people, I mean, exaggerate on Twitter or whatever, but of course, I just think if he can show enough, prove exactly what they're looking for in AAA, they'll bring him up. I mean, it's not like you're going to sit and burn anything um and i get the hesitancy from waiting because of guys like andrew vaughn or stuff who we have rushed up before but i don't know dude everyone everyone's saying like every every time you like listen to someone speak about prospects and they go to colson montgomery it just seems like he's a well-rounded player that may develop quicker than some of the previous guys that we had because a lot of them were they had certain skills, but they weren't as well-rounded as Colson is. And I talked to him at the Field Museum. He's got that dog in him. He's like, hey, <laughs> how many times, guys, over or under, how, how many times do you think Deech brings up how he met Colson this year? I'm going to say at least 10. <laughs> nah. That was it, man. I talked to All I was like is like, how soon are you going to be in Chicago? I mean, I was just sitting there bullshitting with people. Even Soroka, I was hoping they'd line Soroka up to face the Braves. I was like, you want that redemption game, don't you? Hey, <laughs> revenge game, baby. You love it in the NFL, revenge date, baby, you know. So I've seen stuff about this. Have you guys seen what's going on with Mr. Shohei Otani and all that the shenanigans? Yeah. I have, yeah. 
Okay. I, what, what, I, I don't want to talk too much about it, but what do you guys think about it? Just like it's like a like a thing. Like it's kind of crazy. Right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird situation. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's just the thing. Again, Jadis, you know, you Jadis, go list, go, go, and yeah. Anyway. Good question here by Eric. Uh, uh, my favorite White Sox player, and I want to ask you guys, my favorite all-time White Sox player is Mark Burley. I love Mark Burley. Just all of the all around Mark Burley. So who do you guys, who's your favorite White Sox player of all time? Uh, full long. I have to go Pauly. Um, he's a close number yeah. one, too. Because I just grew up with him, right? Like, it, I think it's one of those things. Is like he was kind of yeah. the mainstay. And uh, – like obviously, Jim Tomey's up there, AJ, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go Polly. The fact that AJ has a podcast now and like it just like it's so weird to see him like have a podcast and talk about it. And sometimes I feel like the way he talks, it's like he doesn't even like it, he wasn't even on the White Sox. But then it's funny because all White Sox fans go up to him and ask him questions. So who is your favorite well, player? Like, go ahead. No, I was gonna say like he openly says that he's a White Sox fan. And, like he's like I think that's kind of cool to have it like national presence because yeah. like he. He does like openly advocate for the White Sox. I think it's pretty cool. Andy mentioned they sent him to uh, watch the San Diego prospects the week before the cease trade. Did they? So they're really sitting and oh, they're wow. trying to get as much eyes that would know anything about the game of baseball on <laughs> like these decisions, which I can appreciate because it's better than Han the Khan and Kenny Williams sitting there fighting over whose opinion is better. So, oh my God, it gives me anxiety. And, and yeah, and that's just, you know, and that's the thing where it's like, you see that you see AJ and like, I obviously like when he's on the games on Fox and everything, like I, you know, but Frank Thomas also does that too on like, you know, and Frank is one of those two where it just like that exposure sometimes, I don't know. And that's why it's just like, I just want to be a decent team. Cause it's like, we go on those ESPN games. I hate listening to those announcers and they just irritate me because they're like, da, 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 da. But then the White Sox seem to play good on ESPN for some reason sometimes. So. Yeah, but Pauly, Pauly is, like, right there with me. So, who is your favorite player, Deech, of all time? Uh, mine's kind of – I mean, it's there's other people that like him, but mine's more obscure where it isn't, like, the Big Hurt or Pauly or any of the I, – I was a huge fan when I was younger of Maglio. I just thought Maglio. – Maglio's game just, like – I was like, yeah, I love this dude. Man, I love Maglio. I would I would run around. My dad had a big card, cardboard cutout. We had like a game room full of like arcade games. We had like a pool a, a pool table. We had a ping pong, a, a, a bowling, a fighting and everything like that. We'd have a, we had a giant Maglio cardboard on the back door. So when you open the door from the garage to walk into the back door, all you'd see is a giant Maglio. <laughs> it was so <laughs> great. Man, I love Maglio. And I would run around and be like, Maglio, oh, we yo. I, all, all the time. I, I think at one point my parents were like, just shut up. I'm like, my bad. <laughs> I kind of – I. it's funny when you say Maglio and then it's like all these names start rushing back to my head and I'm like, they like weren't in my head three seconds ago. But sometimes you name these older players and it's like, dang. So I thought I definitely thought you were going to say uh, uh, Josh Naylor. No, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fucking hate <laughs> <laughs> You love it. All right, I got a question. I got a question though. Which what, what you got? Who's the most obscure White Sox player you can name off the top of your head? Oh my god, I can name like fifty. I don't it's, know why the first person that came out. to my head was Brent Lillibridge or Connor Gillespie. That that was, those are the two I was exactly thinking of. <laughs> I, I just like thought of that when he said obscure, and I was like, who the hell can I think of? And those are the two I thought of. Oh uh, my who who remembers Ronald Belisario? Yep, I remember him. Oh my god, it gives me anxiety. Or uh <laughs> what was the one? What was the one year they had? Uh, it was Carl or not? It, it was the it was the year with Gillespie. They had like it was like Gillespie. Was that the year with Dunn? Was that the year we had Dunn too, where he had like uh, bombs but struck was, out a million know, times? Because wasn't Gillespie like a top prospect? Yeah, because wasn't, wasn't his yeah, brother? His brother top. ended up becoming decent. I remember. I remember hearing his brother's name for a minute. Casey Gillespie, I think, it was his brother. Yeah, something like that. Something know. like yeah. that. I don't know. Deech, what do you got? Who, who is somebody that, that – that's a good question. Who is that? Who is somebody? Wasn't Jerry Sands on one of the teams? Oh, yep. <laughs> JB Shuck. Oh, my God. Or, no, <laughs> no. Jordan Danks. 
Jordan Diggs. Yeah. Who could forget about him? I remember. Do you guys remember? It was a long time ago. Maybe I'm just like, maybe my memory is just all coming back. But I remember this game. John Danks pitched. He pitched seven innings. We were down. We were, it was like 0 0, and Jordan Danks ended up hitting a home run. And they're like, this is the Danks game. This is, I'm just like, please, will we please stop? Jordan Danks gives me anxiety too. I remember when that guy got released. It was like the happiest day of my life. I celebrated. <laughs> it was just like, you guys remember we started the three, the three Garcias in the outfield? Like, I don't know, that was probably eight years ago, uh, six years ago now. It, it was, was eight like, years, I think it was, it was probably eight years ago now. Cause yeah, wasn't it, it was Avi? Avi. Uh, there was some random Dominican guy that we had from like the Pirates. I forget. I forget. Oh, I know. It's like on the tip of my tongue. It was Gar. It was yeah. Larry Garcia, Avi Garcia. It was Larry Avi and some. I forget oh, the guy. I can, was like oh, him, Alan Hansen was on that team. Oh, uh, that I was a TA. I, was wearing number twelve. It was oh that my god! Team. I got. I gotta look up. I gotta look up White Sox three Garcias. <laughs> oh my god! It's gonna drive me <laughs> insane yep. now. Alan See, Hansen. Oh my god. This is this is how you know we're real. this is how you know we're we're White Sox fans because we know these peoples. We do. We we know these yeah, people. I just saw we, Joey. Joey just said first guy I thought of was Alan Hansen. Yep, that that's, that Hansen. was. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's see. Willie, Willie Garcia. Garcia. That was yeah. Willie Garcia. Yep. Willie. There we yeah, go. I knew Willie. it was. I was thinking of like Willie Harris. Willie Gar. Oh my god, it gives me anxiety. Whew. Man, I could go I was, on for days about this. Thing. I was gonna say we all three of us could have a podcast and it could be like a game. Let's just continue to name guys that were on the White Sox that and we could be here for an hour. Yeah. He says the Braves <laughs> will probably start. Yeah, Braves gonna beat the beat the beat the snot out of us. But I like watching the Braves play. They're a good baseball team. Two games have been postponed and they will be played on Friday, most likely. Braves and Phillies. One thing I hate about baseball season being back is now I have to look at the weather every day to see if the White Sox are going to play because the weather here in Chicago blows. So they posted a Blackhawks thing yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I I know a bunch of wrestlers were at the game yesterday. I don't know if any White Sox players went though. There is. I was there. Um, were you there? You were there last night. Troy? I was there. Yeah, I was. Hey. He's talking so, about how the uh, whoever they the, admin, they keep. Switching. Yeah, they didn't switch the account. Uh, so it'll be like the White Sox account, and it'll be like uh, Davidson scores the second goal. <laughs> yeah, Davidson scored, and he like po- and they post on the White Sox account, and they didn't take it down. Uh, they probably <laughs> did not, but it was up for like five hours. Oh my least. god! See, know. I've definitely done that. I do that all the time. Sometimes when I'm posting something on my Tino's time and the South Side Boys, I actually post on the South Side Boys, and I'm like, "Oops." So I feel their pain, but yeah, I mean, you know. Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> but five hours. Sometimes I notice it right away. Five hours. That's crazy. Did they win last night? Yeah, they did. Hey, Three, that's a miracle. Four, one, something like that. That's a good game. Something like that. My friend works there. He does the parking and everything. And I ask him, oh, like, really? so who won? He goes, I don't know. I, I, he, I He was like, I just parked the cars and left. I'm like, you suck. <laughs> like, whatever. Like, I guess I'll just go look myself. You're supposed to help me out. Thank you, Joey. It was Willie Garcia. I cannot believe that Willie Gar- Willie, Avi, and Lori. Remember, we thought that was going to be a good team. <laughs> he said first guy I had to think of an Alan Hans. Oh, my God. Who is the other closure? Remember the uh, Addison was Reed? second baseman. Addison oh, Reed. Addison Reed. Who, who, I remember when they – didn't they trade him for Adam Eaton back? Isn't that what we – I remember I they – uh, I thought it was Santa. Was it, I think they traded him for Santa. Wait. Was it for Addison Reed? I'm trying to think. I thought was Santiago it? was. Oh, he was in there he's somewhere. another one. Oh, who is the one pitcher that would come out and put his arm like this? Did you remember that guy? Jimmy Cordero. Remember? Yeah, that was Cordero. Cool. There we go. Yeah. Oh, my God. Him, uh, what was his name? Shingu Takatsu, where they <laughs> hit the gong when he came out and. Uh, came into <laughs> what about Ku- what about Kusuke Fukudome? I would always be like, I could, K- <laughs> I would always, I'd be like, Mama, I could say the F word. There's a guy on the White Sox, <laughs> yep. So, man, there's so many. The fact that we've had older players like veterans like Kevin Euclid or Griffey or Manny, I or- bought a Euclid's jersey. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I, I swear to God, I don't, I don't know where it is now, but I did buy it for my oh, birthday. My I want, I was, gosh. I was probably. I was young at the time. I mean, I was probably 12, something like that. Man, but, that's yeah. Was, Man, like yeah, I did we, ask for Kevin Euclid's jersey. Maybe we should do that. What do you think, Deech? Maybe we get like four or five of us together and we just try to do like a circle of White Sox players. See how <laughs> long draft. we go. Yeah, just see how long we go. It could be a good video. But 
that's all the comments and that's everything that we got here so foot long i want to say thank you bro for coming and hanging out here i know it went a little bit longer so i'm sorry about that but i appreciate oh, you making sure. time coming on here hanging out with us we do have one more comment we got somebody from ireland in the house all the way from ireland hey now i didn't know we uh the south side boys are now known in ireland each imagine we get an ireland order or something <laughs> but uh so, man, Nate, thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything you want to promote, you got going on, you want to let people know? Do you got yourself a YouTube channel? This is your time to no, not let really. everybody know what you um, got going on. Lately, I've just been kind of getting pissed off at reading idiots on Twitter and bitching about <laughs> them and getting in trouble by Twitter gods. Oh, but, God, uh, I love Twitter. Big babies. Yeah, no, that's 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 my that's my game right now. But nothing, no, nothing going crazy. Um uh, yeah, so thanks again for having me on. Deej, thanks for hooking it up. And I, I had a fun time. So Yeah, definitely have to get you on later on in the season when you got some games. Yeah, or sure. like I said, maybe we could do a fun video. I think that would be like so much fun. Like the yeah. five people, just see how long we can go. I think that would be something that be would sweet. be interesting. I think people would like to see something like that, and especially if we could keep going. I think that would be great. So, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, man, thank you so much. Deej, you got any last words before I see you tomorrow at opening day? Get excited. Let's go. Yeah, man. I'm already getting chills. I'm sorry. I did, I did kind of just get ch chills as I said that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, let, let's just see how this goes. And whoever's at the ballpark tomorrow, feel free to uh, say what's up. Unless I don't like you, then don't. <laughs> and you know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> you don't like that list might be long. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Beach's block list is very long. Nah, I'll mute people, but I'm not, I don't, it takes more to say, if you do something like shitty, then I'll block you, but. Speaking of that, speaking of blocking, can you do something so I can start tagging you in post? I keep forgetting to ask you, and now that we're talking about it. It's you, private. I, yeah, I know, you. I can't tag you, bro. You got to do something so I can tag you in these posts. I don't know, man. You know, I mean, you got to stop being so private, so. But. Thank you to Footlong Comiskey for coming and hanging out. Thank you to everybody. We still have 232 people here from Twitter, hey, YouTube, probably. Instagram. So biggest probably Southside Boys episode ever. So Footlong, I, I guess you bring all the people, bro. I, <laughs> yep, I, I got I got a good following around me, good or bad, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a so, following, right? So yeah, yeah, I appreciate everybody that come here and hang out. Thank you to everybody that has – done and left questions and everything we are still one subscriber away if you have not yet make sure to hit that subscribe button let's get to 1840 by the end of tonight guys but tonight and today that is all we have here for you i know all you wrestling fans i know all you guys that love me so much for wrestling we will not be here for aew dynamite tonight we will be getting ready for opening day as i will be there live deech will be there live foot long will uh We'll celebrate for you. We'll have a beer for you. Let's get that done. Sounds w. good, man. So yep. we'll be at opening day, so we will not be here. And I will not be here tonight for Dynamite. We will not be here live tomorrow, as I don't know what time we'll be getting home. But I do have something special for you guys. As last night, I decided I was bored. And I decided to download six MLB superstars. And you guys are going to love this. Six MLB superstars in WWE. We got Troy Don, a YouTuber dressed up as a Blue Jays player we got an mlb fan we got shohei otani mr cub frank thomas and a white Sox fan so we got an mlb battle royal in wwe 2k24 something just to give you guys so you guys got something to watch here tomorrow but we'll be back here on friday for friday night smackdown guys as it's the last friday night before we begin wrestlemania weekend and we begin wrestlemania week next week when we're watching the wwe hall of fame and the last SmackDown, 24 hours away to WrestleMania. So thank you to Footlong. Thank you to Deech. Thank you to everybody that did come here and hang out. If you have not yet, guys, make sure to hit that like button on all the social medias. Go follow Deech. Go follow Footlong Comiskey. I'll make sure to put his Twitter in the description if you want to go follow him and join him for all the fun stuff in the White Sox season. But go follow the South Side Boys. Go get that merchandise. Go hit and Make sure that you become a member. All that good stuff is. Remember, guys, we'll be having a raffle once we hit 2,000 subscribers or almost there. So go do all that good stuff. But if you can't, hit that like button on this episode. Subscribe as we are one away to 1840 and 61 away to 1900. Hit that subscribe button and join the nation. 
That is Tino's Nation. And lastly, guys, turn that notification button on so you know when new episodes come out and when we go live again next. For uh, well, next time we go live, which will be on Friday, with here back with Lamar, the man of the 1K, Friday Night SmackDown. Guys, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday night, Thursday all day. Everybody that's going to the baseball game, hope to see you there. And I'll see you guys back here on Tino's time on Friday night for Friday Night SmackDown.